Certainly one of the biggest challenges you'll face as a scrum master or an agile leader of any kind is when you're working in big organizations. You'll encounter a kind of desire to stand still. People want to do exactly what they were doing yesterday. It's comfortable there. Why is that? Why is it particular to large organizations? Well, here's the truth that nobody wants to tell you. People, some people, not all, but some people flock to larger organizations specifically because they can fit in. They can blend. They don't want to be the person who stands out and takes a lot of risks. Generally speaking, they want the safety and security of a long-term job that probably pays a good pension, and that generally speaking, they know the company's not going to dissolve or disappear. Compared or contrasted to, let's say, a startup, where everything could be gone tomorrow, right? A different kind of person seeks different kinds of opportunities. So when you go to a large organization, you'll meet a lot of people who like things to be predictable and consistent. What that means is they have not yet been trained in taking risks, seeking adventure, innovating, being visionary, or even being intentional in their work, and that creates a little bit of a problem for you as the practitioner. When you present them with agile or any kind of change, because remember, agile is a form of change, big change. It's a change in the way we do things, and it involves a letting go of some of the standards and safeties that we're really comfortable with. Big business cases, business plans, project plans, extensive documentation. So when you're asking folks to change, understand that they are used to and have been trained on things being predictable and somewhat safe. So now your challenge as a leader is to get folks to love change, to embrace it. How do you do that? Number one, make it safe and easy to fail. If you have environments where failure is still associated with negative outcomes or negative consequences, change will always be hard and difficult for most people. The second thing you can do is protect your team from harm. You are to stand in the way of danger or consequences for your team. When you do that, there's some bonus points there that creates massive trusts. You do that once and your teams will never forget it. And then the other thing that you have to do is simply demonstrate. So at first, you'll encounter some resistance, you'll encounter a lot of questions. Sometimes the best way to answer those questions is to simply show them. Run a sprint. Do agile things and let people see that at the end of those two weeks, even though you've taken more risk, even though you've used less documentation, less safeguards, that things are less predictable than they were before, nobody dies. This is one of the master skills, making change, risk, and uncertainty comfortable for people. And the only way to do that is to go first. You show them, and once they've seen it and realize there are no negative consequences, it becomes much easier to ask them to make new and different changes and adjustments later. But if you take your foot off the gas, what will happen is everyone will slide back into their default mode, which is big PowerPoint presentations, big Excel spreadsheets, long meetings, not really putting themselves on the line to deliver something that's valuable and testable by the customers. And that's a tragedy. And in the case of Agile and Scrum specifically, it's a recipe for disaster.